Here's a quick rundown of my process for 3D printing using Blender for modeling and Cura for slicing. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'll be modeling a wall-mounted remote holder, but the techniques I describe can be used on many different projects whether they're related to 3D printing or not. The first step is to collect measurements of the remote. Using a caliper, measure the real-world object. The measurements should be accurate, but you don't need to measure every facet of the object. In this case, a length, width, and height will do. I prefer to use millimeters for my measurements, as it translates well into Blender and Cura. With the measurements complete, it's time to head over to Blender. In Blender, press N to bring up the transform controls. Blender's measurement units default to meters, but Cura interprets these meters as millimeters. So if the remote is 54 millimeters wide, make the remote 54 meters wide in Blender. It's possible to change the unit of measurement to millimeters, but then you'll have to scale the object 100,000% in Cura, so I don't recommend that. Once that's done, you can start modeling the remote holder. Again, this isn't a tutorial on how to exactly model a remote holder, but I will share a few general tips that will apply to most of the things you might print. Using extrusions and loop cuts, I'm making a shape that covers roughly half of the remote. When you're modeling something that will interact with another physical object, be sure to leave a margin between them for the pieces to slide together smoothly. The margin will depend on the diameter of your printing nozzle and the accuracy of your printer. If you can, use the mirror modifier. In this case, the holder will be the same on both sides, so mirroring it worked great. Because you're printing with filament that's costing you money, think about what you really need as well as what you don't need. The remote holder doesn't need tons of plastic in this center area, so that area can be removed. All of these sharp corners and edges look ugly, so I'm going to select some of the edges and use the bevel tool to round off the corners. But wait, if your corners aren't rounding evenly, leave edit mode, find the object menu, choose apply, scale. Now the corners will bevel evenly. Using the scroll wheel on the mouse, you can change the amount of subdivisions of the bevel. Don't go too crazy here. I've heard that ultra high poly edges can negatively affect your printing. Here I'm using the Boolean modifier to punch screw holes in the mounting plate. To do this, model a shape about the size of your screw, overlap it with your object, and apply the Boolean modifier to the original object, selecting the new shape as the target. When the new shape is hidden, you can see the holes it left behind. If you want countersunk screws, modify your shape like this. To export your object, select it, then go to File, Export, and choose STL. Be sure to check the Selection Only box to avoid exporting the Boolean objects. Now let's jump into Cura. When you first launch Cura, it'll ask you what printer you have and what filament you're using. Once you've given it the necessary information, import your STL and tell Cura what size of nozzle you're printing with. For something like this, where visible layer lines aren't an issue, and there aren't any fine details or moving parts, you might consider using a larger nozzle to save time. Here I'm using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. If I was to slice the model as is with supports, it will generate supports under the overhangs and would take 20 grams of filament and one hour and 55 minutes to print. Disabling adhesion helps a little, but the key lies with the object orientation. Switch to prepare mode and select the rotation tool. Using the gizmo, click and drag to rotate the model on the x-axis so it's standing up. Now when it's sliced, it will only take 1 hour and 24 minutes to print and only use 12 grams of filament. You could print it as is, or if you don't mind layer lines and want to save some time, you could increase the layer height to 0.28 millimeters to shave another 12 minutes off the print time. Once the object is sliced, it can be saved as G-code and printed with the printer. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about Blender, please consider subscribing.